Greetings and welcome for the launch of the Global Labour Resilience Index 2021. I have the pleasure to have with us Sir Christopher Pisaridis, who is Chair of the Global Labour Resilience 2021 and also Chair of the Institute for the Future of Work. Chris, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And I would like to ask you a first, uh, a first question which is regarding the launch of the Global Labour Resilience Index. To know what is the importance of this index, the 2021 edition, in the context of COVID-19? Well, having a good resilience index is always important at any time because the labor markets are changing all the time. And the resilience index tells us where uh, labor markets uh, are going and how good they are at absorbing shocks and creating new jobs. This year is particularly important because, as we all know, there's been a massive new shock, completely unexpected, something we didn't have um, uh, to deal with before. Uh, so learning more about labor markets, how resilient they are to this new shock, the COVID-19, is, is very, very important. And in fact, my reading of the index, my first reading, it shows me that uh, new things uh, have been discovered. Uh, for example, we were surprised by the um, poor response of the uh, U.S. economy. Usually, the index comes uh, fairly high. It shows that it's resilient to many shocks, but with COVID, uh, it, it didn't cope very well. Unemployment has shot up. That might be because of the absence of uh, government support of the kind that uh, we had in Europe, with the furlough programs and all that, that kept unemployment low, at least is the headline unemployment rate, but it's very important to keep workers attached uh, to their companies. It, it improves the resilience of the market as a whole because uh, re-employment can begin uh, very quickly. Uh, we've learned a lot about the impact of um, active labor market policies uh, on uh, labor markets and the index helps us understand why and, and, and it takes all, all that into account. Um, we um, learned again something that comes up from the index that particular groups of the population have been hit worse by COVID-19 than others, for example, women and youths. The reason for that, of course, is that uh, Unlike um, previous technology shocks that affected mainly manufacturing, uh, some office work, of course, as well, but mainly manufacturing, uh, COVID-19 has affected jobs that required proximity of um, human beings in the performance of the work or between a supplier of the work and the customer. And um, women and young, work young workers are much more involved in those uh, types of jobs. And um, another thing we learned, which is very important, is that to organize uh, e-commerce and um, other activities that are done uh, through the internet, so they continue without requiring the uh, close proximity of human beings, uh, you need to be supported a lot by uh, what we call gig work, um, like delivery people, uh, people who come to go to offices to perform one of jobs, you know, generally contract independent work. And what we know about gig work is uh, unfortunately very little in fact, but what we do know is that uh, there is enough protection, there are no paid sick leave, no paid vacation time, uh, no uh, pensions. And that makes them not good as career jobs. And um, having an index, the discussion that goes with it as the um, resilience index that we're talking about now uh, tells governments and big companies that um, labor markets are of different degrees their uh, response to these shocks uh, is different and uh, it helps them uh, plan better for the future Thank you, Chris. Yes, you mentioned in your in your answer uh, that uh, there are different types of government capabilities depending on the shocks. You have shorter term shocks like COVID-19, you have longer term shocks like the technological evolutions we've seen in the last decades. 
Um, and there have been some adjustments to the methodology related to these government capabilities adapting to shocks. Would you elaborate uh, on, on this? Yes, the, 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 the main adjustment is in response to the fact that uh, th these different shocks um, hit uh, countries as a whole, in particular labor markets. Uh, they cannot be avoided and maybe they should not be, they should not be avoided because that's where the global economy is going. But the labor markets should be capable to absorb them, to adapt to them and transform themselves into the new world of work. So what the new methodology emphasizes has these three things that I mentioned. Um, learn how to absorb the shocks, or at least the index will tell us the capabilities that countries have to absorb. How do you adapt to these new circum circumstances that they are creating? And as part of this adapt adaptation, how do you transform your labor market so that it enters the new world of work uh, more efficiently? It, um, comes, it, it improves the productivity of work and generally improves the, the living standards. And that's very important to get these three, which they, they seem to be coming in sequence, absorb, adapt, adapt transform, but, they, but they're really part of the same parcel of um, improving uh, labor market conditions in the face of these shocks. And the resilience index gives us an indication of what kind of labor markets are better at it so that we can all learn from that experience. Yes, indeed. Uh, indeed, uh, Chris. And uh, an interesting fact, you were referring to the United States earlier on. We, we noticed how, how weaker they were on the absorption of the short-term shock like COVID-19, but then much stronger on a second capability, which is uh, the adapting uh, capability. Mm -hmm fast the markets recover after that and exactly. challenge is to achieve the balance if you want between those three. Um, now of course with the global labor resilience index we also zoom in on on countries and can actually do more extensive studies and in that regard uh, there is a UK uh, labor resilience index 2021 which is also launched uh, today would you have uh, some comments on the results from the, the UK labor resilience study? Well, the UK labor market, of course, is the focus of the Institute for the Future of Work, uh, with whom um, th that with whom the GLRI has uh, collaborated in the production of the UK index. Our focus in the um, Institute for the Future of Work is, is good work and um, job creation. Uh, to help especially disadvantaged groups. And we've learned a lot um, from the uh, GLRI index uh, for, for the UK labor market the, in, in the following sense. The UK has been good at the national level at, absor at absorbing the shock. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, support from the government through the furlough uh, schemes, especially, but various other measures. But when you look behind the headline and behind the high score that the UK gets, which is uh, 12, I believe, on the, on the global index, you discover that there are many, many disparities at the uh, regional level. And um, something needs to be done about uh, that. Uh, London in the Southeast, for example, uh, is always the best performer, especially when it comes to technology, but also in response uh, to COVID because of its economy. But it's not all good. Uh, there is uh, a lot of uh, inequality, which is increasing in COVID conditions. Uh, gig work uh, is expanding a little bit too much. Just you only have to walk out into any London street and you will see uh, people that you know that they are on short-term contracts, either drivers that are not uh, uh, full-time employees of a the driving agency or uh, delivery people in their vans or their motorcycles. That, that needs to be taken care of. It's not good to have an economy that is performing so well and that at that level it's creating these um, unsatisfactory work conditions, if you like. Uh, then if you go beyond, you discover that there are regions that haven't managed to cope uh, well. For example, the Northwest or the, 
in the Northeast, especially of, of the country. Um, and um, you, you, you learn other things. For example, we learned that although at the national level we depend on policy by the national government, when you look at the local level and the performance that is not good, then local authorities could add a lot if they focus in the areas that I have. For example, there is a good policy in Greater Manchester taking place, which is called the Technology Fund, which was able to quickly provide the disadvantaged school children with the tools that they needed for online learning. So overall, what we learned from the UK is that, um, is that there is resilience at the aggregate level, but if you look at the regional level, maybe there, maybe things are not as good as they should be and policy helps. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, now, if we take the lessons from the UK and other markets that you've been following over this exceptional year of 2020, um, what would be your, your perspective? Uh, what would be your advice to, to, to governments over the next year? Like, what, what should they be focusing on from your perspective uh, to enhance um, labor resilience, either in the short or the, or the, or the, or the medium term? Well, my advice to, to, to governments re really take, um, it would be two pronged, if you like. One of, on the, one of them would be that you've, a, a lot of you have done well. We know which countries have done better than others in um, helping in the resilience in the face of, uh, of COVID. Don't dismantle everything immediately once the vaccination is uh, used more widely and um, the immediate dangers from the pandemic uh, go away because it, it takes time for labor markets to adjust to the new conditions. And when we emerge out of this pandemic, th there will be um, totally new conditions, some totally new conditions that we have to adapt. You know, gig work is not going to go away. Um, remote work, you know, working from home is not going to work completely. Business travel and all that will not uh, come back immediately or uh, actually going to the shops will not come back immediately. There will continue to be a lot of online consultations and online shopping. And uh, adapting to those things takes time. Uh, I all means study the resilience index because it tells you which uh, labor markets are better place to adapt, but make sure that you, you adapt your own policies from furloughing and uh, other support, even during the pandemic, support even post pandemic, even the new normal. My, my second bit of advice would be that uh, don't think that um, COVID-19 was a one-off. I've been listening a lot to scientists, what they've been saying, and they've been saying that that this kind of um, epidemic, if not a pandemic, to be more specific, the transfer of viruses from uh, animals to humans and humans not being able to cope, it is not unusual. It, we've had it uh, in the past, even in the recent past, maybe more isolated cases like Ebola, SARS, uh, Hong Kong, China, uh, about 20 years ago. And we're going to get it again. Uh, so make sure that your labor markets have resilience. Don't just ignore it. And then when you get hit, you panic. You try to think, what can I do to increase the resilience of, of, of my labor market? We've learned our lesson, not being prepared. And make sure that you do prepare your labor markets to be more resilient to this type of shock, as well as the technology shocks. Thank you, Sir Christopher Pisaridis, for answering these questions on the launch of uh, the Global Labor Resilience Index 2021. Thank you very much.